This episode is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey guys, it's Neyman and welcome to another really fun episode. In today's episode, you will learn how I created this really cool artwork that is based and inspired by Netflix TV show Arcane. In case you didn't watch Arcane, I highly suggest go and watch it. It's a TV show based on Leagues of Legend, very popular game, and it's done amazingly. So this video is not sponsored by Riot Games, it's sponsored by Envato Elements, and Envato Elements made a fan-based competition, so several of artists had the uh, task to create an artwork that is from that TV show or based on TV show, and today I will show you how I did it. I use Blender, I use Photoshop, and combine everything together. It took me several days actually to create this artwork. It's really fun and amazing uh, journey, but it's a little bit longer, so you cannot create every photo manipulation in 10 minutes, so this will be a speed art video. I will just uh, explain you something on the go, but basically I cannot put several days into one video in real time. That would be probably be the longest video on YouTube, I don't know. But thank you Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. In case you don't know, Envato Elements is an amazing website where you can find all the assets for basically any project that you are creating. They have millions of stock photos, stock videos, sound effects, music, a lot of different video effects, transitions, intros, outros, also amazing assets of 3D models, which I personally love the most because you can use that 3D model and rotate it however you want, however it suits best for your photo manipulation and just put it in your artwork perfectly. So that's really cool. And also they're pretty affordable. The annual price is just $16.5 per month. And also you have unlimited downloads. So you can download as many assets that you need. And all the assets are licensed, so you don't need to worry about that. Right, guys, if you want to check out Envato Elements, follow the link down there in the description and enjoy all the content there. Now, let's jump straight into the video and let the fun begin. Okay, welcome to Blender part. I use Blender to create the whole environment because it was the easiest way to create something that I saw in a TV show. And for this, I use just primitive objects like uh, cubes, uh, cylinders, etc. And it was really fun and easy process. It was time consuming, so it, it's not something that is done really, really fast, but I really loved it. So now I will let you watch this process and then we'll go straight to the Photoshop. Okay, so after I finish my modeling part, I render out the final scene. This is how it looks now. Let's populate it with our hero and our bad guy. So this is a bad guy. My friend acted both as a hero and as a bad guy. And uh, obviously, first thing that we need to do is to extract it out of the background. And this is boring and tedious process, but it's something that we always need to do it. So after that, I turn this into a smart object, position it where I want, choose the size, etc. Here you can see so many photos that we did for our hero shot. Also, we ran some costume, etc. So to have it something close to the Jace in the TV series and again, boring into this process, extract him out of the background and place him in the scene. Again, I always like to turn my layers into smart objects because I can later maybe make it bigger or smaller without losing the quality of that layer. So this is it, I place him right there. And next part is modeling the hammer, the Jay's hammer, which is really amazing and it's really easy to model it. Now, now I will let you watch that part. And again, I use Blender for that.
And that's it, this is our hammer, I really like it and it's really cool, so now let's place him in the Photoshop in the hands of Jace. Everything is now pretty straightforward, I choose the proper position of the model, put the hammer there and just use the layer mask to get the impression that actually the Jace is holding my friend here, but Jace as a hero is holding that hammer. Really cool thing about renders is that you can render out different passes. So this, these colors that you saw, that's the ID pass, so you can use it to really easily select any, any object in the scene without struggle and the selection is really precise. So I'm using that a lot, also you can have a miss pass, that pass, etc. So that's really, really cool benefits of using renders. Now here what I'm doing is just uh, tweaking a little bit more lights on the model, adding shadows, etc. And I will do the same for the other guy. And then you will see a cool part where actually I'm hand painting the helmet and some other parts, the weapon of this uh, bad guy that is actually flying through the fence here. You will see that in a moment. Okay, so this is the part where I manually painted the helmet and other elements here for this guy. I could do that in a blender, I could model that helmet, but I want just to do it this way, just to use several different techniques to show you guys that everything is possible in Photoshop too. So if you practice enough and uh, just invest some time, you can, instead of model something, you can paint it by yourself. Also, there are some other ways how you can do it. You can use several other elements from the internet from stock website like Envato Elements and uh, then you can combine these elements to create different kinds of different kinds of helmets but this is my way for this tutorial I really hope that you like it and that you will got inspired to try this technique on your own
So after I finish with the drawing, I need to add a motion blur to all the elements that I draw because uh, the model itself is already blurred and I need to match everything together to have the impression that this model is actually flying pretty fast through the fence. So I didn't want to over exaggerate with the motion blur because uh, then it, uh, there will be less details visible, but it's enough to have the impression that actually he's in some kind of a movement and uh, that he's flying through that fence. Okay, now here is the part where I try to figure it out what kind of shape I want to use for uh, the movement of the hammer and that, that complete move of that punch. And this is what I came up with as a sketch. Then I will use exactly the same technique to create that trail uh, of movement. The same way I created this liquid that you can see right here. This represents the liquid from the helmet inside because these creatures are inside some kind of pinkish liquid and when the when that helmet was broken the liquid went out so this is how they stylize in the tv show so i did the same way Okay, so after I finished with this liquid part and all the debris, I went to Boris FX Optics. I really love this plugin and I use this kind of effect to simulate the motion, the trail of the motion from the hammer. That hammer actually should have some lightnings uh, going out of it, but I experimented with this, I experimented with a few other ways uh, on the go you will see and ended up with completely something different. But this is the process that I'm doing right here. So Boris FX Optics and really cool ways to create these kind of things. Now is the time to add a little bit more debris to the scene to emphasize the effect that something is going on there, the, the fence is flying or whatever. And I'm using my custom made debris brush that you can get on my website for just one dollar. Or if you want, you can create your own. I have a tutorial on how to do that. To add a little bit more depth to debris, I use the layer styles dialog box to add emboss and uh, bevel and emboss. So uh, in that way, uh, we have the impression that these debris are not just 2D, like they are 3D uh, part of the scene, as you can see right here.
Here I wanted to add a little bit more smoke to the background. I'm using my custom-made cloud dust smoke brush that you can, again, can get on my website, check it out, or you can create your own. I have a tutorial on that too. Also, these light rays, really simple way to create it. Just use the brush tool, create some lines, blur it, and lower the opacity, and that's it. Again, I went to Boris FX Optics to create a different kind of uh, lightning effect on the hammer and uh, I, this time I used a different approach. I like it, how it went, but at the very end you will see that the final result I changed it to something completely different that is more uh, stylish orientated to the lightnings in the TV show. So you will see that. Now it's time for final coral correction and after some tweakings and changing my mind on something, this is a final result. Right guys, you just saw the final artwork. Let me know down there in the comment section what do you think about it, do you like it, did you get inspired to create something on your own watching this video? You saw so many techniques in this video, how you can create something in Blender, implement it. Uh, in Photoshop with your photo manipulation, how you can paint something manually in Photoshop instead of modeling, if that's something that you like and also it's always better to use pen and tablets for painting than mouse, but still you can do a lot of things with the mouse if, you're, if you don't have pen and tablet. Also you saw how many uh, effects difference you can add like debris, smoke, etc. to emphasize the movement or some action even more and to make overall scene even more interesting. That would be it for today. If you like this episode, press that like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe in case you aren't already, and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. Have fun experiment, and see you in my next one. Bye-bye.